Alright, and welcome back to Brave New World Blindfolded. Uh, in this episode, I'll be splitting it up into three minisodes again, and we'll be taking a trip through, uh, I have to click on my business so uh, I can, there we go. Alright, so let's just show my equipment for a second. So yeah, this is the stuff I've got, mostly the same as last time. I just slapped defensive stuff on Realm, because she's not going to be like my MVP or anything otherwise. I mean, she's still not going to be my MVP, but might as well not have her die in the process. Although Cyclo sketching Cyclonic from the Adamantoids is actually quite good. Even if she had spells, I'd probably be sketching Adamantoids because knocking their HP down to nearly zero in one fell swoop is pretty nice. So just like the first trip through the mountain, I'm going up on the next step. This, the battles require some attention, but uh, overall the segments are quite short, so that helps me out a bit. This is lock. Okay, so uh, this is realm, so sketch the thing at the back, because it's the most likely to be an adamantoid. And here's Drago. I'm getting into the habit of pausing when I'm uh, worried about characters' turns. Terra just went, so worried about what I'm going to be doing. See, I, I'm pretty sure Celeste, I mean Celeste, Realm sketched a Cyclonic from the Adamantoid, which made that guy go down pretty nicely. So yeah, going up on the next step, always important to remember these things. Item. That's not item. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I went down to equip. Okay. Skills. Item. Oh, Strago took more damage than I thought. Whatever, he didn't die, so I'm not losing a phoenix down out of the deal. Oh, wow, straight through the floor. Uh, I came a little bit sooner than I was expecting for some reason. To the left, unlike the, L the BFLLG, I don't need to run around for a battle here. Because I don't need to apply Vanish to anyone, because that wouldn't be very helpful with Cyclonic and Acid Rain and Raid. And Vanish isn't nearly as potent here in Brave New World as it is in... Alright, so I uh, gotta determine if this is Realm or Strago. This is Realm, so sketch whatever. Uh, you attack. I'm attacking with Strago here because uh, the Kudzu, if it's in this fight, uh, doesn't take any damage from water, so. That seemed to work out pretty nicely. Random spell proc. Always helpful. I don't think they did a lot of damage there. But they did some damage, so I didn't waste my time going into the menu at any rate. So let's... This room's nice because I can exit it the exact same way I used to walk in here. I pretty much just gotta do the steps in reverse. It's always nice when that happens because... I only have to remember half the stuff. It's one of those things that makes it really easy to memorize. All the way down. Right and down. The, the bridge here, er, uh, the left and downs make this bridge really easy to traverse. Not that it would have been that hard to begin with, but this just makes it even easier. Which I can't complain about. Easiness is always nice. Probably there. If I wasn't there, I would have gotten a fight. Alright, there's no way I need to remember which whether I'm going... Uh, okay, who are you? Okay, you are Realm. To the back. 
you are Strago. I already have your thing on Aqua Rake. All I have to do is press the A button twice with the other characters, and then if it happens to be uh, lock, he'll attack right away. And if it's Terra, she hasn't attacked yet, so I can multi-target her fire too. And I might as well just spam the fire too throughout. It's almost always lock first anyway, but I can just hold A at this point. There shouldn't be any real need to do anything fancy right now. There's my Cyclonic. Now you're practically dead, Locke. Might be able to finish you off here. What was... oh, that was Sneeze. Realm, you're not gonna get the EXP, which is a shame, because... Well, Locke didn't get the EXP either. I guess, uh, I've hit the average on here. Realm's the one I want to get the EXP, Locke is really not. But Locke gained a level this segment anyway. I know he gained for, from either the first or the second fight. I can't tell for sure, but... I'd guess the first one anyway. So yeah, I doubt Strago died there, so... There were Harvesters, but that's not gonna kill him, and... There were, uh... Sneezes, and... The cyclo only Cyclonic went their way, and the rest of it was all just average shenanigans, so... I'm not expecting that he died there. One. Two, three, re enter the cave, down, right, down. I gotta do the down and right thing three times, and then I'm pretty much in the clear. Alright, that might be the last fight this segment. I can't say for sure, but. Okay, so, I can just, uh... Alright. I'm hearing lots of acid rain, which isn't gonna bother Straggle a whole lot. Realm's the only one who's really in danger from that, I think. But she's got the guard, the wall ring, and the gator hide, so am I expecting a realm death here? Not that much. And you're all dead. I, I'm glad that realm's main useful form of offense here is uh, an attack that's fractional damage, because that means she doesn't need any stats at all, so pure defense is definitely the way to go. Pure defense, magic defense, etc., back row, whatever. I took like one step up there, like, oh my gosh, gotta hesitate, things could, things could be dangerous. I mean, things could be dangerous considering I'm just running blindly around cliff faces, but uh, that's not a big deal, I guess. Because my characters have like, some sort of magnetic pull to the cliff. I mean, like, not off the cliff, a magnetic pull to the side of the cliff. Sh now, this should be the last fight. It really should be. Still more fights than I thought, but... Well, that's a slurm. Uh, what? Oh, I figured it out. There we go. I heard- I thought I was awkward for a second, I was like, what's going on? Well, people are getting discorded all over the place. And now magnitude. That might actually be dangerous. For Realm, at least. And to a lesser extent, Strago. Well, that finished them all off. Did that finish them all off? I suspect something went on that I wasn't aware of there, but. Alright, now I should be in the 
Ultros room, which still has no encounters, so yeah, no big deal going through this place. Nothing can happen in this room. Unless I get lost somehow going in a U shape and then. But that would be a very big fail. I'd have to, like, not go far enough and start going directions too early, which generally seems not to be the case. If I generally make a mistake, it's usually waiting way too long somewhere. Now, I better not get a battle on this one step backwards, I'm gonna kill someone. There we go. Part one is complete. Nobody died. Yippee. Strago has a little bit less magic points than I expected, actually, but that's okay. Hang on, did Strago level in Realm not? Oh yeah, I guess... The, I, I don't know. See you in two seconds, anyway. Alright, then this... Time for part two. This really is happening just after the last part of the segment because I don't have any practice to do because I didn't do the BFLG all that long ago and the enemies are all exactly the same around here so there was really nothing to investigate before I went and actually did this so at least I hope there was nothing to investigate there will be absolutely no way for me to know what I get from that chest that I'm gonna be picking up in this mini segment so essentially, I have no idea what I'm doing. Alright, so all the way right. Battle. Gotta get my cursors and stuff lined up again because I just... Actually, I shouldn't need to because this is uh, directly after the last segment. I never even uh, reset the game, so... Um, so where was everybody? I'm used to just forgetting all this crud, but, um... Well, that was a slurm. I know that must be Strago, so let's not mess around his lore mini this time. Did I just sketch Discord? I mean, that's not very useful, except for possibly teaching me the lore, which is probably not all that useful. Well, there's some magnitude, in case I needed it. Oh, something died. Fire! That should do him in. That can do him in straight from the start, since that was a five slurm battle. Where did I leave my cursor? I think I might have done some fiddling in the menu, but I can't think of where I would have left it. Well, I guess I gotta do the experiment with all the options way. I didn't get lucky at any rate. There's my save. The experiment with all the, all the options way is obviously the most fun to watch out of all the ways I could do something. It's just so riveting. U shape? Not quite as large as the other one, this is like the mini U. Not that I'm saying it's a shorter version of U or anything, but... That would make no sense at all, obviously. Since you're not part of a map at Final Fantasy VI. One step left, two steps left, I'm in the cave. Now that I know I'm in the cave, I can go back along the U. And just start trampling all portions of U. All the way back to the left, and now I'm... Now I'm back where I was, but when I fell down the hole. Thankfully, falling down the hole in this game isn't quite as consequential as falling down the hole in something like Mario. Because otherwise, this game would have no conclusion. It would just end here. It'd be game over right when you 
after you defeat Ultras, just randomly game over, falling down a hole. That would suck. That would be a horrible, horrible revolution. Resolution, not revolution. Nothing's revolving here, and nobody's rebelling, so... Alright, if I'm lucky, I might be able to make it out here with only one encounter this segment. I'll probably still need to tent up before the next one, though. Strago's not looking so hot on that MP. One step left, one step up, and... Point. Well, that about wraps that one up. 43 MP, do I think I can make it? Terra's only got 56 as well. I don't know. I'm not gonna chance it. It's only a tent, it's not that big a deal. Especially since I've got like almost 100k gold from all that farming I had to do to get Gao any amount of usable rages whatsoever. So let's just take a nap here. I could do this off screen and probably should, but I'm being an idiot apparently. So see you next time in another two seconds. Alright, and yet again, this is literally like directly after the last uh, portion of the segment. I mean, I guess I could theoretically, something could go wrong in the Leo versus Kefka fight, but chances, I'm almost 100% certain that the only thing I don't know about that fight is just how badly Leo's gonna kick Kefka's butt. Alright, so... Oh wow, you're actually Strago. Uh, what? I swear something's fishy. Okay. So does Rome's targeting actually stop when she reaches the... Ed with the sketch? I wonder if... Whatever, I'm not making any sense, so let's just kill some slurms. Kill some slurms and make some sort of slurm stew out of them. Of course, none of that fight really matters except for Terry going haywire and murdering everything with fire, too. Yeah, so I'm thinking Realm Sketch doesn't make any noises when I reach the end of the. Uh, the enemies. Well, none of the two characters that sometimes need healing, needed healing, so... Resourceless wasting, not battle. Made it down to the... Now I can get, walk up and right for a while, because this bridge is nicely organized. If I make it out of here with only like one more encounter, I'm suspecting I probably wasted my money with that tent. If I end up with two, I'm almost certain it came in handy because backup strats would take a while whether they'd be actually dangerous or not is another question because I'm pretty sure Locke has almost no chance of dying on this mountain. I'd probably have to try very hard to get Locke killed. Front row or no. Alright, I should be on the mountainside now, so change gears with Strago. luck as expected. Well, the realm sketch is acting like I expected to do before now. And just smack something. Because fire rod's probably gonna be more useful here. Not by a ton, but... Oh, that's one thing dead. Terra's Fire 2 should clean out the uh, everything else. Down to the bottom. Up one, left to the side. Alright, now I've made it through the majority of this trip. One, two, run up for a bit. 
Alright, so this is another case where I may be inside or outside the room and it doesn't matter. Left one, up one. So if I was outside the room, outside the cave anyway, it's not much of a room, I just took one step left, the doorway is two spaces wide, so I ran into the doorway. And the second, if I was inside the cave, I just uh, went left one, up one, and then the second time, I ended up here no matter what, obviously, because if I was inside the cave to begin with, I just ran into the wall a couple times and gave some people some pain. And there's my fading out. So yeah, this segment should be pretty much over. It's kind of funny with Leo because, like, he almost breaks the time-space continuum of the story because he could easily take out Final Kefka with, like, one hand tied behind his back and be back in time for tea with the <laughs> stats he's got and the power he's got on that shock attack, which will, of course, get a nerf so that it's reasonable to use eventually, if you know what I mean, which, if you're watching this, you probably do. But yeah, Leo is so insanely powerful to, right now that... There's no way Kefka could realistically kill him even before, especially before he's got all his, uh, like, extra magicite from the Espers being idiots in this following cutscene here. And also the whole didn't absorb the gods of magic thing. It's kind of a big detail. But even after that, Leo should be poning him into the pavement, just like, curb stomp fight. Oh, ice too, what crazy, crazy power! Everyone better go on rambling for like five minutes about it. Let's hurry back up and get back to town so that we can get y'all killed. What? Uh, nothing? So yeah, the navigation in the ensuing cutscenes here is going to be, I mean after the ensuing cutscenes, the navigation during cutscenes is obviously not that big a deal, but the navigation afterwards is going to be extremely simple because all I've got to do is take two steps right and then walk upwards and talk to Kefka, and then I'll be on the overworld after uh, the Kefka fight, which will be obviously a piece of cake. It involved a little bit of thought in my BFLLG, but here it will definitely not. <laughs> the thought will be, how do I press the shock button? Oh, shock! I've even only got one character, so I don't even need to bother working out which character is which. I just kind of got to throw the shock out there, so... Leo should even be able to reasonably take out the Guardian that can't technically fight here because it's invincible. I mean, unless we take it from the standpoint that Kefka's clone just has really, really horrible defenses and Shock didn't cut through defenses, which it probably does. I guess it really doesn't matter whether it cuts through defenses when it only when you only fight one enemy with shock as of this moment. Cause if the enemy's cause it's pretty much a fixed value either way, how much damage it's gonna do, fixed depending on your level at least. Now start frying the town people. Pretty sure if Leo just used shock once, the whole town would like get wiped off the map. The Mesa Island would become the floating continent instead of the other place with the cave to the sealed gate on it. But that's how bad the, this place would get fried. But oh, so that's what you meant when you said you that we die. I get it. Oh no, that sucks. <laughs> One last burn a nation, and now we get to 
about to see Leo in action. This is really the only thing I can do between the first two of these really long cutscenes. And then I get a whole walking two spaces up between the next two. Oh, Kafka. Ready to get owned? I don't know how much damage that did, but it was a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if it was full nines. I know for a fact that in the LG it was not doing full nines, but it was doing a lot, which is hilarious because he was like not a very high level. I don't remember what level he actually was, but so yeah, that whole walk two spaces right, walk up to the top, huge shock. Now back into more cutscenes. Very cutscene heavy segment here. Emperor Gestal. Very slow for some reason. Oh, there goes Leo. I guess the only reason why he died is that soul stabby knife that Kefka has. It's canon. That's canon to Brave New World. Maybe that's what happened. In that case, Kefka really should have kept that for the final battle. <laughs> Just like soul stab. <laughs> there goes Locke. <laughs> Perma death. That is, if he doesn't evade it. <laughs> Which I really would not be surprised about considering his evasion stab, but. That would be a pretty bad ending if Kefka just started murdering half your team permanently. Said he just uses dump things like Goner, which don't perma kill anyone, and just kind of. So, uh, almost the world of ruin, I guess. Now that we're hearing this song, the song of uh, things getting blown up and transformed and worlds falling apart. I mean, I guess you hear it once before this, but whatever. Pretty much the only thing that stands in our way at this point is the floating continent. That's a relatively tricky area of the game, but after that, things will tone down massively for a long while. Especially since, uh, solo character areas are, I feel, proportionally easier in Brave New World as a, like, as a norm, but solo or, uh, duo or not less than four characters anyway, but... They're also proportionally easier blindfolded because... I only have one character to keep track of, which makes things a lot easier. But using one character when four are expected is just ludicrous anyway, because I'm obviously not prepared to... I mean, the game's not expecting one character for those fights. So like, one status effect, pretty much done for. Or you can use your relic slot to protect against status effects, and then you have one less relic slot. Which I generally don't use for status effects protection in Brave New World. But who knows, considering... I have plans on not using certain relics in the World of Ruin. Which you've probably already long heard about by now. So why am I keeping it vague? Considering my... Uh, I'm gonna be at the World of Ruin long before I upload this segment. So yeah, considering I'm not going to be... Using any... Guard rings or wall rings or... Anything that provides a defense or magic defense boost. 
I'm I might end up using more status effect protection relics instead. But I tend to find in Brave New World it's so easy to heal with a remedy that the status effects, as long as you have like one person or two people protected to have a leg up, you're probably good. You're probably not going to wipe. Unless it's confused and you get bad luck or something, that can always happen, but I mean, that's the exception, not the norm. But of course, status effects are far more dangerous in a blindfolded playthrough to begin with, too, because I can't tell who's got them, and recovering is tricky. It becomes a lot more complicated. And I'm trying to remove as much complications from my strategies as possible so that I don't need to... <laughs> it's better if I rely on strategies that I come up with beforehand rather than strategies I come up with during, because the strategies I come up with during, I'm more likely to mess up. And are a lot harder to do. It's a good thing I'm relatively talkative this time around. I also think I'm more talkative in general when I'm fairly confident that I'm going to beat a segment because like I know I'm everything I say is gonna probably get heard rather than me just blabbing to a wall and seeing what fits into the blooper. When I hear the overworld thief, that's when I know this has ended. I still find it funny that in the in in the Imperial Banquet segment, I actually s just stopped talking at one point because I it was like, "Yep, I'm dead. No point in saying anything else." Then <laughs> I had actually ended up going through just barely, I bet. I never actually checked how much time I had left at the end. It was probably not much, though. I'll know when I go to do the d annotations for that segment anyway, because I'll probably forget by the time this segment is over and or, and or be too lazy to bother checking, so... There's that, anyway. But whatever. More rumbly, explosion-y things. So we didn't have enough of those in this game already. As like half the sound effects I hear in cutscenes, rumbles and explosions. Every now and then a jump or something, or a door opening. Maybe some fire, but I guess depending on the fire noise it could almost sound like a explosion noise. Not something like the fire spell, but something more like the fire 3 spell. Fire 2 is somewhere in the middle, which I suppose is what you'd expect considering Fire 2 is between Fire and Fire 3. So now we're getting the continent flying. It's a whole lot smaller when you go through it as a dungeon. It's like half of the place fell off when actually going up. Before it was like, I mean, seriously, that's like something the size of Greenland just flying into the sky and then becoming something the size of, like, Waterloo Campus, I guess. Probably a bad comparison because I suppose not everybody knows the size of Waterloo Campus considering probably everyone watching this video has not been there. But, I mean, unless they're my family or something. Well, then, do the airship. So, uh, let's go over here, close my eyes, hit, put the landing in gear, put the airship in the landing gear, or something, whatever. And that's the end of that. Funnily enough, actually shorter than my BFLG, even though I fought the random encounters, because, uh, probably just, maybe it was general speed, but it was also possibly general Leo. Which I suppose is a different type of general, let's not equivocate here. See you next time.